Hello. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the application called Safari. Safari is the default web browser that comes standard with every iOS device. In order to open up Safari, I'm going to hit the launch button, and that's going to open up a blank web canvas. Now, there's a lot to Safari, but in this tutorial, we're really just going to hit some of the basic features that you're going to need to know. There's two sections to Safari. This top bar, which is our menu, and really where all the navigation handles, and then we have the actual browser itself, which when we open it up is white. Now in the middle it has the word untitled. Now that is the title of the website that we're going to be searching for. Right above it it says go to this address, and that's where we put the URL, or most commonly known as the web address, of our website. To the right of that we have our search button where we can do our standard um, searching features from a variety of searching applications. To the left we have a bookmarks bar and a cloud feature and we'll explain a little bit more about that as the video progresses. Alright so the first thing that we want to do is we want to go to an address and let's just say we go to my favorite website teachercast.net now right away on top you can see that Untitled has changed to TeacherCast.net, Educational Blogs, App Reviews, Podcasts, Screencasts, Live Binders, and Career Center, the name of our website. And we have our standard website here. It looks great in portrait mode. And if we switch it to landscape, you can see that it automatically adjusts as well to both screen sizes. Okay, so a couple things that we might want to do once we have this website up. We might want to save that website for future use, and we save that by doing bookmarks. And a bookmark, just as the name and titles, is a way to save exactly which page you're on. If we click up on bookmarks, we open up the bookmark menu where we can hit edit and we can easily add bookmarks, subtract bookmarks, we also have our history. It shows us which web pages that we've been to. And then we have a new feature called the reading list. And this helps you collect the websites for a later time. So I really like this website, teachercast.net. So I'm going to hit plus and I'm going to have this add to my reading list. Now, the neat part about reading list is if you have another iPhone, iPad, or even on your desktop running Mountain Lion, you can use these reading lists to your advantage. You can save the website on one device, open it up right where you left off on another device. One of the neat features here is this cloud called iCloud Tabs. Now, what this is designed to do is work, again, in conjunction with your other iOS devices and also on your desktop. If I had other devices running on this iCloud account, I will actually be able to see which tabs are open on those browsers and be able to bring them into here but that's for another video series if I like this page a lot I can email it to myself I can submit it to Twitter I can put it on Facebook I can add a home screen button print copy or again bookmark and add to reading list I want to show you the add to home screen button because this is a neat feature that many people just don't know about I'm going to click on add to home screen and you'll see it automatically gives a little icon version of what the website looks like and it gives you a name. I'm going to back out of these extra characters and it's just going to say teacher cast. Now what's going to happen is when I hit add it's actually going to make an icon on my home screen. And there you go. There is our home bit, our home screen for teacher cast. If I ever wanted to go directly to teacher cast I can click on that and boom, the website shows up. Navigating through Safari couldn't be easier. You just use your finger to swipe up and down. And of course, if you wanted to click on anything, you just tap on it and that either opens up a brand new tab or it opens up in the window that it has. And here's a really nice podcasting network for everybody to listen to and enjoy. You'll see that that did open up a second tab on the top of our Safari bar. If I wanted to switch back, I can certainly switch back. And if I wanted to open up yet another window, I can certainly tap on an icon. Brand new window opens up. 
and here's our teacher cast blog. If I wanted to delete some of these tabs, there's an X right up here, and I can delete these as I need to. Or if I wanted to open up a brand new window, I can type the plus sign, and boom, it's all good to go. Now, next to the URL, we have a search button. So let's say that I wanted to search for teachers. Now, it automatically gives me Google suggestions of different teachers and different teaching websites. So let's just type in search and automatically it goes to a Google search. Now, I can change where this Google search is in my settings. I can change it to a Yahoo search or even a Bing search if I need to. And of course, here we are with our full featured Google search. And if I want at the bottom here, it allows me to visit it in tablet mode or even look at it as a, a desktop would. So the neat thing about an iPad is it get, does give you those options for a tablet device, a mobile device, and sometimes it gives you the options for the desktop version. So we have a few great things that are going along here. Let's say I wanted to go backwards in my history. I can click on the left arrow and that allows us to go back as well. So Safari is a really simple application, but it's very, very powerful and easy to use. I want to take a moment and I'm going to show you some of the settings and how you can customize Safari. I'm going to hit the home screen back out of this swipe over to my settings and I'm going to scroll down to Safari and so we have a few different settings here to talk about under search engine of course we can see that's how we change from Google to Yahoo to Bing we can autofill which means that it automatically knows who your contacts are what your names what your passwords are this is a really interesting feature that if you turn it on can save you an awful lot of time show open new tabs in background that was how so we can keep the tabs left and right always show bookmarks you can turn that on or off private browsing is really about accepting the cookies when a website gives you a little piece of data it wants to know who you are where you are and it's really just keeping track of its users you can choose to turn those on and off we can of course certainly clear our history and clear that cookie data anytime we need to. And some of these other things I like to leave on, but the last thing I wanna show you here is the web inspector. So it really helps out to know some of these great additions to Safari. There's certainly a lot of things to go into Safari. We'll leave those for a later video, but I just wanted to show you some of these neat things. And that is iPad Safari.